Before we begin working, let's talk a little bit about some of the kind of core concepts for this session. So first of all, AI. When we say AI, we're referring to AI in the video game context, also known as weak AI, that's specifically designed to focus on a narrow task, and we're not gonna be creating Skynet to kill us all in an hour. Second is the concept of a finite state machine. So this is not a concept unique to games, but can definitely be applied here. Uh, a finite state machine is a system which consists of a set of states and transitions between those states. And it consists of a finite number of states and a finite state machine can be defined by a list of its states in its initial state and the conditions for each transition, right? So this is exactly what we're gonna be building here. So here is the simplest example of finite state-based AI is our chaser AI. It has two states, patrolling and chasing, and it can either be in patrol or chase state. And then we have conditions for the transitions between those states, right? So if it sees a target, it will transition from, it starts in patrol. If it sees a target, it will transition from patrol to chase. And then in this case, if the target dies, it will transition from chase back to patrol. So the system we're gonna build today is what we'll call a pluggable AI, and we'll build it using scriptable objects. So scriptable objects allow us to create scripts which are similar to mono behaviors but are not components attached to game objects. Instead, we're going to create assets out of them and store them in our project. Scriptable objects can be used to store data or code as an asset, and we're going to use them for both purposes in this session. So for an excellent primer on scriptable objects, I, I highly recommend you check out Richard Fine's talk, which is called Overthrowing the Mono Behavior Tyranny in a Glorious Scriptable Object Revolution, which is from Unite LA. Uh, and this session is actually inspired by the pluggable AI example he showed on stage, and which you can actually go and download if you want to see another implementation of this concept. Uh, but the implementation is different. I came up with my own way to do it, but the overall pattern is the same. And so speaking of patterns, the software design pattern we're using is called the delegation or delegate pattern. So in delegation, an object handles a request by delegating to a second object. So we will delegate behavior to scriptable object assets and thereby create the pluggable aspect of our system. So in our little graphic, we have the requester that wants to do something. It sends a request to our delegated action, and it doesn't need to know what action it's calling. It just says, hey, I want you to do an action, and we can plug in and out different actions into that yellow slot in the graph, and then it will output a result based on whatever action was currently being delegated to. So, the elements of our pluggable AI are four assets. We have actions, decisions, transitions, and states, and then one mono behavior, which is the state controller. So the state controller is a mono behavior attached to our agent game object, our tank. The actions are things an agent does, which do not change the state of the, of the finite state machine. Actions include, for example, patrolling or attacking. Decisions in this system are things an agent does which have the potential to change the state of the state machine. So decisions include looking for a target. If a target is found, we'll chase. If not, we'll patrol, for example. States hold a collection of actions and decisions and will repeat those actions and decisions until a decision is made to leave that state. So through delegation, the state controller only ever needs to know that it's working with a state or an action, not which state or which action it's controlling. This means that later, if we want to add states or actions to the system, we can do so easily, and the links between the different parts are created by the user and the inspector, not directly in the code. So before we begin writing code, I just want to show you quickly how this actually looks in the finished product in Unity. So here we have the completed version of the project that we we're just watching play. 
And let's take a look at, for example, our patrol chaser. So this is for our chaser AI. This is their patrol state. So we've selected the patrol state asset in the project view. And we can see here in the inspector, it consists of one action, which is to patrol between the three waypoints here, and one decision, which is to look. And that is represented by the, turn the sound down, that is represented by the green line, right? He's currently looking and patrolling. If this line intersects something, and this line is actually a sphere cast, and we'll talk about that, uh, he's going to transition to the chase state. If not, he's going to remain in the current state in the patrol state. So we can close our complete project. Now, the goal of the lesson is to focus on creating our flexible AI system. And to do this, we're using Unity's tanks game as a backdrop. We're not going to be teaching the tanks project. There's already a video series for that that you can check out if you're curious. So I have, when possible, provided partially complete scripts, which handle hooking our AI into tank systems like its game manager and tank manager classes. So I've provided partially written the state controller script, and then we also have an enemy stats class, which we use to create a scriptable object that just holds all the stats for the enemies, like the move speed, how far they can look, the, ra the radius of the sphere cast, and so on. So we're just using this as a asset container for the data about our enemies' different capabilities. And that's already been written. It's just a really simple scriptable object class. You can take a look at it, but it's not super important for what we're doing. Now, the state controller class, let's just take a look at that in MonoDevelop really quickly. And so here we have a reference to our enemy stats class where we're going to be drawing our stats from. We have a transform holder object for the eyes, which is where the tank is going to be looking from and attacking from. And I'll, I'll show that in a little bit. And then we have references to the nav mesh agent, the shooting script, our list of waypoints, right, which I mentioned earlier. I'll just point them out now. Uh, I made them green here, waypoint one, two, and three. This is the waypoints they're patrolling from. These are being passed in from the game manager. It has a list of those and it initializes each tank with a list of waypoints from the, in this setup AI function. So this setup AI function just allows the game manager to pass the waypoints to the tanks, to enable them and disable them when the round starts. And this is kind of boilerplate stuff that's not directly relevant to our AI, but we just need to have working in order to be able to play the game. So I've already written that stuff and provided it in the incomplete asset package. Okay. So now that we've kind of laid out our concepts, we've looked at what we already have. We're going to get into writing some code next. Let me just look at the chat, make sure everybody's doing okay. Uh, and then we will begin. All right, so let's see what people are saying. Scriptable object are lighter weight than mono behaviors. You get the advantage of being able to manipulate them with the editor, but at the same time, there's a lot of infrastructure in a mono behavior you don't need. Yeah, for example, uh, we have our enemy stats class, right? That doesn't need a transform component. It doesn't have a location in space. We wouldn't want our game designer accidentally attaching a rigid body to it, uh, for example. Uh, and so it's just kind of a clean way to say this asset is just a bunch of data about the move speed and the attack range of this type of tank. We could make copies of it, right, and say this is a fast tank, this is a slow tank, and assign those to our prefabs. Uh, if you want more about kind of the whys and hows of scriptable objects in general, please check out Richard Fine's talk because he talks for an hour and lays out lots of great use cases. And it's actually where I got the idea for this talk. So it's really good. Uh, Falcon's asking, what does pluggable mean? What pluggable means, let's just open Unity again for a second. What pluggable means is we can, well, we don't have anything set up in this incomplete version, but we can drag and drop references between actions, decisions, and states to create unique agent behaviors or to create finite state machines without having to say in code, 
if the player saw the enemy, transition to the chase state, right? We don't have to hard code that. Instead, we can set it up in the inspector, and that way we could say, this type of enemy runs away when it sees the player, whereas this one chases, and we don't have to have that all hard-coded in scripts. We just make a chase behavior, a runaway behavior, and a decision to transition between them. 